Hello, everybody. I'd love to welcome you to episode two of season two of our sports show. As you may notice, well, not yet. The cameras haven't panned yet, but Chance is not with us. He's currently trying out for wide receiver of the Buffalo Bills because who else is Josh Allen going to throw the ball to? But joining me as always is Elgin. Mm-hmm. And today, the NFL season starts tonight with the Chiefs and the Ravens. We already did our predictions for that game. I believe I picked Baltimore. You picked I picked Baltimore, Baltimore as well. So we got a, a upset brewing. But today is special. We're going to talk about a whole bunch of different topics today. But one of the main ones we're going to start off with is award predictions for the regular season. So we're going to predict, like, you know, just what this season is going to look like. And it's going to start off with our award predictions. So we're starting off with MVP. Elgin, I'll let you get started. Who do you think is going to win MVP this year? MVP, so honestly, I might get a lot of flack for this. I might, I might get a lot of flack for this. I have two options. My second, my, I'm going to go with the one that I, like, that's more likely, but I don't think he, that, but he's not my actual prediction, is C.J. Stroud. My okay. first, y'all, you're going to, this is going to be a real interesting one. <laughs> Drake, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I was going to say. I was, I was just kidding. My MVP prediction, I think Joe Burrow might, has a big shot at winning it this Burrow, year. Burrow, okay. I think he's going to win two awards this year, actually. We'll get to that later. What do you think your MVP is? So, MVP... I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and give two as well. My m- unlikely one, but one that I think people are sleeping on that he definitely could do it. I'm going with my boy Tua Tonga Vailoa. <laughs> I just you guys are going to, you know, I think if he's going to prove himself to be an elite quarterback, he just got paid. He had a really good season last year. I think if he's able to change some of those late season struggles that he had last year, if he's able to play a complete season the way he did in the first like four, eight games of last year, I believe we'll be looking at him as a serious candidate. But my guy who I think is going to win MVP, this is a little bit out of the ballpark as well. Um, I don't think people are giving him enough credit just because of how the late season collapse his team had last year. Jalen Hurts Ooh, is a guy I don't, I haven't really liked, had too much high praise for. But he could sling a football. I think this year, as long as this team stays healthy, they give him someone in the backfield who's much more dominant than I think uh, Miles Sanders has been with his time with uh, Philadelphia. So I'm going to go ahead and say Jalen Hurts takes it. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. And then uh, for comeback player of the year, um, uh, there's a – honestly, there's not too many candidates for this award. It's um, – right now, my can- my pick right now is Joe Burrow to win this award. My second pick will probably be Aaron Rodgers, though. But I, I'm, I don't like the Jets, so I'm going with Joe Burrow. <laughs> I got you. My reason I don't think Rodgers is going to win it is just because I don't think he has a whole season of him. He's – I don't know if he's already 40. If not, he's pushing 40. Um, that O-line is revamped, but I think people mm-hmm. overrate the Jets offseason. Like, yes, they brought in Tyron Smith. When was the last time Tyron Smith played a full season <laughs> of football? It's so in- – in MetLife, you could say what you want about the turf. I just don't think he's holding up. So I think comeback player of the year is going to be Joe Burrow as well. I don't think there's kind of anyone else that would really stand out to take that award away from Burrow, and I think Burrow is just going to – Play a full season, play really well. Mm-hmm. And then for um, a defensive, defensive player of the year, this could go a lot of ways. There is a lot of candidates, but my prediction, right? I'll give you two answers. My number one prediction, I think Max Crosby. Max Crosby is so. You stole uh, my answer. Yeah, Max Crosby. I don't know if y'all know. If you watch Max Crosby, that man is insane. But my second pick is someone that's never gets the award, but you know, I can't wait to hear the Steelers fans. <laughs> T.J. Watt is my second pick, but, you know, some reason the award committee doesn't like T.J. Watt, so I, th- I think Mac- Max Crosby is his, this is his year. So I agree. I know, didn't T.J. Watt miss some time last year? He did, and he so still had a pretty darn good season. Exactly. I think I'm going to swap those. I have the same two candidates. I'm just going to swap it. I like Max Crosby a lot, and I think adding uh, Christian Wilkins to that interior is only just going to help Crosby a lot more coming off that edge. So I think he's it's going to be neck and neck between the two. And it's really going to be hard to count out Miles Garrett, despite the season he had last year. But I do think it's going to be T.J. Watt. I just think if he's able to stay healthy, this is easily going to be his award. It's just – and edge rushers always usually get the nod. And there's a lot of good guys in the secondary this year. But I think it's kind of hands down going to be T.J. Oh Watt. Yeah. That leads us to Offensive Player of the Year. Last year, uh, that went to uh, Christian McCaffrey. And he definitely deserved that award. But – 
I think there's going to be a player who I kind of believe should have won it last year, maybe a little biased. I think Tyreek Hill hits 2,000 yards this year, and he's undeniably the offensive player. He might not hit 2K, but I think he's going to get offensive player of the year. And don't make that face because he's a favorite to win it. I think he's definitely I'm not mad about the pick more than that, that little 2,000-yard prediction. My you offensive player of the year. Honestly, it is really hard in this league to hit 2K injuries happen, you know, dead games happen, cold weather games. you got to put that in account. I don't, honestly, I don't think we're going to get a 2,000-yard receiver. The Ty, this is Ty, Tyreek Kill. How old is Tyreek Kill? He's thir- he said he was going to retire at 30. That was a couple years ago. I don't know if he's holding up to I that. don't think he's going to do that. I, he has four years left on his deal. Yeah. I know he's not 26. He's probably 27, 28. Maybe I think 29? he's pushing 30. I think he's 30. But um, my offensive player of the year, honestly, this is going to be my first repeat. I think CMC is just so good. He's honestly, honestly, without CMC, I don't think the Niners would be nearly as good as they are, even though they're still stacked. Mm-hmm. But without CMC, but CMC was like the the guy on that team. So I have CMC repeating. He's my only repeat award winner. I got you. Yeah. So now yeah. we get to our rookie of the year. We start on offense. Now, so many quarterbacks went in this first round. Um, so many offensive players just in general. We didn't see a defensive guy taken until pick 13, I believe it was. Yeah. Um, so offense rookie of the year. I'm going to go ahead, and I know a lot of people are going to say that um, it's going to be the number one overall pick, Caleb Williams. I know a lot of people are banking on Neighbors to take it. I think Neighbors finishes two to number one, Jaden Daniels. Mm. Now, I think he's going to a solid little situation in Washington, and I think he does enough to really turn the franchise around. I really Mm. I could see him being another RG3. I don't want him to turn out the way RG3 did. I think he's the same kind of athletic, athletic, and I think his mobility, it just is on a whole nother level that makes him top of the tier. I think he's going to be the offensive rookie of the year. So my offensive rookie is Jaden Daniels, but my second option would probably be Keenan Coleman. I'm really high on that guy. For Malik, here's the thing. I don't think Malik Neighbors will – I think Malik Neighbors will be third on that voting list, but who's throwing him the football? I don't think the ball is going to be able to get to him because Daniel Jones has zero pocket awareness, but we'll get to that later. But that's, uh, I think uh, Jan Daniels as well is going to win. I think he, he reminds me of AR-15. Yeah, lot, I can so. see it. Let's hope he's it. Actually, I don't know why I didn't think of him for comeback player of the year, um, AR. Um, he, Richardson. He, uh, for, apparently, he didn't qualify. Well, I think he wasn't on the betting odds, but I think he'll definitely – If I could go back and change a pick right now, that's exactly the one I would pick. I like Joe Burrow a lot, but I don't think he missed enough time to really qualify, so I would change that to Anthony Richardson. I I don't know why. Anthony Richardson, I think you have to miss at least least like seven games. And Anthony Richardson, Anthony Richardson, I think he he got hurt middle of the season. Anthony Richardson got hurt in like week four, dude. But I remember him playing... I don't know. He apparently he didn't qualify. I'll, I'll yeah, dig I think in. you checked the betting odds. I think that was a different thing because Joe Flacco technically didn't miss any time last year. He just didn't play in the games because he just came out yeah, on his couch. Probably. I still have Joe Burrow winning that word. I, I, I still have high beliefs in AR-15. All right. Offensive Rookie of the Year. We're done with that. Defensive Rookie of the Year. I'm going to go to Los Angeles. I think Jared Verse, um, he's one of my favorite picks. I like uh, – who was it, Dallas Turner that just went to um, oh, Minnesota? Did, did go to Minnesota? So I think it's going to be between those two. I'm, I'm really high on edge rushers winning this award, but I think Verse is a whole different kind of athlete, and I think the Rams' defense, now with Aaron Donald missing, they're going to need someone to step up and kind of be that figure, be that icon, and I think Verse doesn't skip a beat to become that guy. Yeah. Unfortunately, last year, I had Christian Gonzalez winning this award. Unfortunately, he was on pace to win it, but he got hurt. Unfortunately, injuries kill. Injuries suck. But my defensive player of the year, who is probably going to be, ooh, my defensive rookie of the year. There's a lot of good guys, honestly. The def- I know defense, it wasn't a very top defensive class this year. But for the players that, even though they weren't drafted early, there were still some really, like, value players you know what? late. Cooper DeGene. I want Cooper DeGene to win defensive <laughs> rookie of the year. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think DeGene is going to pl- play right away. He was a second rounder or third rounder? I he like a, he was a second round. He was a second round pick. He was the first Eagles pick in the second round. He was he was a first round talent, by the way. But he's he my, was I, I just don't see him getting immediate play. My, my second to option. My second option though is Jared Verse. Verse. Yeah. All right. So that's enough for our first topic where we're talking about awards. Now we're gonna go to boom or bust players. Players that, uh, this is their year. You know, this is their year to prove if they're gonna be a boom, if they're gonna be a bust. 
So I think one of the most important players that he's gotten a lot of talk on the offseason. Uh, Daniel Jones is to me the, one of the biggest boomer bust quarterbacks just because of how much he's getting paid. This is his last year in New York if he underperforms. And I think that's exactly what he's going to do. I just don't have that much belief in him. Um, he doesn't have Saquon to rely on now. It, he does have a new, you know, Malik Neighbors. And Malik Neighbors is definitely going to boost that offense a lot. But I don't think it's going to be enough. And I think this is going to be his last year in New York. So for my first choice of boomer bust players, um, I'm really, I, honestly, this is a boomer bust for one particular player. He's actually, um, I'm really high on him, actually. I think he's going to boom really well this year, but I could see it being his final year here, depending how it goes, though. It's Kyler Murray. Yeah. I'm huge on Kyler Murray, but if I feel like Arizona's just been waiting. Arizona, I'll be honest with you, I think Arizona wants, to, wants this guy to fail because, like, I feel like they want to pull the trigger and getting rid of him fast. It seems like, Ari I don't know, but Arizona just seems they're behaving like they want to get rid of him because they believe, listen, the quarterback class this draft is not huge, but I have a Kyler Murray. Um, uh, actually, I'm, we're going to go back to you for the boomer bust players, but I'm going to give three more. I got you. So for my team, my my team for the boomer bust players, um, our biggest boom player, boomer bust player is Tyquan Thornton. We draft him second second round in the Mac Jones, not the Mac Jones draft. Was it the Mac Jones draft? It was probably the draft before, but he was the fastest receiver in that class, and he has been really bad. So it's 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 real. He's the listed as the um, slot receiver. So this is his prove it year. I believe he doesn't. I don't think he's going to do well. I think this is his last year in New England, but that's mine. And then my third player for a boomer bust. Um, the <laughs> boomer bus player, my third boomer bus player, um, I'm gonna say is Dak Prescott. Mm. He uh, he is. There's two more guys in Dallas that need to be paid: a defensive player and Dak Prescott. Dak plays really well in the regular season, but he he sn he, he wets the bed in <laughs> playoff time. Um, so this is definitely a. I think he. I don't see Dak getting. I don't see Dak getting paid until like, if he even if he does do well and make the playoffs and like have a decent playoff run like make it in a championship game for example yeah if that happens i don't see prescott getting paid soon and i don't see parsons getting paid soon either so i think if dak has a big year he's definitely going to get a contract extension i think there's yeah. no doubt about that parsons might be on the run guys I, I can't see dallas letting him go either I th they'll make something happen they'll pull a rams and Money launder. I don't know. They'll get in <laughs> touch with the mob. They'll make those deals happen. They and have then to. My fourth and final boomer bust player is a another is another quarterback. Is um, I know Tua just got paid, but here's my reason. Here is my this reason. Guy. I know. Here's my reason. He just got paid, and a, I it, sometimes the player likes to not play great when they just get paid. And Tua, honestly, I'm I'm not saying he's not the answer. But I'm also saying I haven't seen – he's in a very, very nice packed offense right now, a very speedy offense. So I personally have him as – like I think this is where Miami really watches him this year, especially during January time hmm. where playoffs roll around. I think they really – I think I do have the Dolphins making the playoffs, but I think they are going to closely watch Tua during playoff time because – I don't know if you watched that Chiefs game. Um, it was rough for for Dalton, Miami, really rough. So yeah, that back to you for the year three. Right. Your last so three. I have three. I'm gonna try and uh, make these a little quicker. These are kind of two of these are kind of like really those guys. I'm gonna start off with uh, one that's kind of interesting in uh, Alvin Kamara, and New Orleans. I think Alvin Kamara is, a, you know, a very bright spot on that offense, which doesn't have too many of them. On the, I like Chris Olave a lot, but um, my thing with the New Orleans Saints in general is if they don't perform well this year, we could be seeing a rehaul. Like, I think Derek Carr is also a big boomer bust player, and I think this is his last year as a starting quarterback as well. So I guess you could two for one those. And I think Alvin Kamara is going to play well. He's going to play fine. Have my fantasy team, so I hope he plays good. <laughs> but um, I li I've always liked Kamara, but I feel like these last couple years, he just hasn't been the same mm. as when he first started. And, you know, that Christmas game, and he had six rushing touchdowns. Where is that? You know, it's just a different Saints team that I think is getting ready to move into a direction where Alvin Kamara is a win-now player. I could see Alvin Kamara on a contender being a starting running back. Mm -hmm. With New Orleans, he's kind of just sitting here, and if he doesn't have the best of years or if the Saints in general don't have the best of years, 
I could see him getting shipped around, maybe getting a third round pick out of him to a team like, you know, possibly, you know, I hate to say it, Kansas City, a team like Buffalo, a team that could add that running back in the backfield. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's a two for one right there. My second, this is also an interesting one. I'm going to go with Justin Fields. If he does not get any playing time this year, or if he doesn't even get, if he plays and he doesn't succeed at all, I could see him, this is the start of a journeyman career that had potential to be something great. Um, if he doesn't succeed in Pittsburgh, I could see them, you know, moving on from him and him just not really sticking around to really be that player. What do you think about that one? That really all depends on how well Russell Wilson plays. That yeah. really all depends because Russell Wilson, he had a decent year, actually, for some of you that don't know. He had a really decent year. It's just I think Pittsburgh did something really smart this year. Got two quarterbacks that are like really boomer bust players. Both of them are really are boomer bust. Mm -hmm. So both both the this team for those two is like a career defining moment for both of them, I believe. I agree. It's either Russell Wilson plays well or Russell Wilson is hitting retirement really soon. Yeah, I think it it's I agree with that. Flip flop. If one doesn't do well, they're done. Yeah. If the other one comes in and succeeds then it's kinda just, you know, flipping off. And then my last uh uh, boomer bus player is a second year guy who is definitely going to have to take a big step up now that Keenan Allen and Mike Williams are out of LA. I'm going with Mr. Johnston, the number one wide receiver right now with the Los Angeles Chargers. Um, yeah, year one was really shaky, mm. really shaky. And now he's going to have to step up and actually be the number one guy for a new look offense that I think is going to run the ball like crazy under uh, Jim Harbaugh. And it's going to be interesting to see, but I. I could see him really becoming something out of this. A full offseason with a new head coach, uh, I think a much better head coach than Staley, and it's a talent thing. He's a big guy. He could go up and get the ball, and I think Herbert's going to rely on him a lot, and I think he's going to become something out of this. He's not going to become a top 10 wide receiver, maybe not even top 15. He could be a serviceable number one, and I want to see him become that in his second year in the league. If not, then we could see L.A. maybe ship him off or drop him to a – point where he's not going to get as much playing time and look for someone else, trade for somebody big to be, you know, that number one wide receiver. And another one I was thinking about was, I'm not too much on this being a boomer bust, but if Stephon Diggs doesn't get that many receptions in Houston, if he doesn't make something crazy out of his playing time, I could see him becoming like a uh, DeAndre Hopkins kind of guy where he gets shipped off, and you know, kind of linger. Yeah, somewhere else now. And, and then I'll start off with the underdogs and dark horse teams. I have yes. two teams on my list. One, I'm really – I'm actually start. I'm kind of been building hype for them is the Titans. I don't know wow. what's with them. They have a – like a kind of an underrated roster. They, their receiver room is, is filled with a bunch of old guys, I know. Mm -hmm. But I'll be honest with you. Listen, it all depends on Will Levis, to be honest with you. That defense is okay, and their two running backs Legereus are – Sneed, big addition. Big addition. Legereus Sneed is on that defense now. So I that's my that's my number one underdog team. I, I'm really I like mayonnaise man. So <laughs> mayonnaise man is interesting. Yeah, and then my second one is going to be an NFC team. My big dark horse team right now is currently um uh, what's their face the Cardinals. The I like Cardinals. Arizona. I, I like Arizona too. I'm like I said I'm huge on Kyler Murray. So I think Arizona is like this is definitely like this is this is an interesting year for Arizona. Mm -hmm. I, Ari people overlook them, but I think like it's a very interesting year for them. I agree. So my first dark horse team is one that I think a lot of people are expecting to win their division. But I think this team is going to be better than a lot of people do. And I think the Atlanta Falcons are not just going to win their division. I think they're going to win not one, but I think they're going to win two playoff games and be playing in the NFC title game. I can't see them beating a team like the 49ers or the Lions, but everyone else in the NFC, I could see them possibly knocking off Philadelphia. I could see them beating a team like who's always in the playoffs, like the L.A. Rams. I could Cowboys. see them. The Cow yeah, definitely. I think they could uh, definitely turn some heads. I think I really like their head coaching situation. I really like Kirk Cousins with this team because Kirk Cousins has always been – that guy, but he's got a roster where Bijan Robinson has a chance to become one of the best running backs in football, and I think he's going to do that this year. I think the pieces on defense are good. They just made um, who was the big addition? They just made uh, Justin Simmons, right? Matthew Judon. Uh, and, oh yeah, Matthew Judon. Mm -hmm. I know you know a lot about that. So two guys who are really staples of those defenses that they're just coming from, and that could really turn things around and win a, a couple playoff games and make a good run. Now, 
Kirk Cousins can definitely be a boomer bust player as well. He um, is. I think he's going to succeed, though, in Atlanta. I just like what I see from this team. Uh, wide receiver room is definitely uh, interesting, to say the least. But I'm a big fan of Drake London. That was his name. Uh, yeah, I really like Drake London. I think he could step up and become a top 15 wide receiver in this league, and I think it starts with a big season this year. Mm-hmm. Now, my other dark horse team. Now, this is one you know I had to think about for a little bit, and this is another one that teams are kind of predicting to do well. But I think um, Chicago is going to make a playoff spot. I don't know if they're going to win a playoff game, but I think people still kind of have them in that eh factor the same way they put the Titans. Um and the Cardinals was going to be one of my other ones. But I think Chicago, they could rattle off a nice little winning streak. Caleb Williams could play really well. And um, one more that I would choose to be a dark horse team is the Washington Commanders. Oh, yeah. Like Dan Quinn a lot. Bit really high on Jaden Daniels. I think if they put the pieces together, they just got Austin Eckler in a day. That, that's one. That's a you know addition I'm kind of iffy on. But they could definitely make a run. For that last play, I'll say it could be between them and the Bears. And if you imagine telling anybody this two years ago, Washington or the Bears in the playoffs, it'd be very interesting. So I think um, I think it's going to be one of those two teams to take the last spot in the NFC. And then my Super Bowl prediction, I want to tell you this. The championship game for the NFC is going to be the Lions and the Falcons. That is my championship That's game. I, I that is my championship that. game. My NFC title game is the Chiefs, even though I don't want them there. But they just get things done. Mm-hmm. And then my second team, I think it's going to be a repeat championship game. I think it's going to be the Ravens. Really? I think just the AFC is just so stacked. It's Usually the, usually it's the Ravens and Chiefs that usually end up going far. Mm-hmm. I don't think – actually, switch that. I don't think the Ra- I, I don't think the Chiefs are going to make it this year. You know, it's Texans and Ravens. Give me wow. the Texans and Ravens championship, championship game. The Colts and Chiefs will play and we'll have a playoff game together. I want to see that. But And my Super Bowl, my Super Bowl prediction will – Will be the Texans and the Lions. I know this sound, man. Three years ago, this would yeah, sound was really wild. Say, could you imagine? <laughs> but the, the, these two teams are like really, really like this is their. I feel like this is their year for both of them. And the Texans have been the Lions, and both of them have been just waiting, just waiting. Right. Especially the Lions. Goodness, they've yeah. been waiting. So and now it's time, and I think Dan Quinn finally, not Dan Quinn, Dan Campbell, yes. uh, finally gets it done. Brings Detroit to the Super Bowl and Detroit, Detroit. I don't know. It might not be safe Detroit if they win the Super Bowl. They they might they might riot. <laughs> they might get worse than Philly did. <laughs> they might greasing up poles and climbing up them. So I uh, wish I could do like a full on like playoff table pictures for you guys. But um, I do think the Dolphins are going to be in the playoffs. I don't know if they're going to win their division. It's between them and Buffalo. I think the Jets are going to disappoint like crazy this year. Um, I know the Dolphins are going to be in there. Give me Buffalo. Give me Cincinnati. Give me Baltimore. Give me Houston and did I already say Kansas, Kansas City because they're you know guaranteed to be inside the playoffs no matter what. So my AFC Championship game is going to be between the Chiefs and the Cincinnati Bengals. I like Cincinnati this year. Um, I think if they're able to piece it together, get this um, uh, number one wide receiver name in Cincinnati, Jamar Chase. I don't know why I just blanked. If they're able to get the Chase situation figured out, which they will. They always do. Every team always ends up paying the player. We saw with uh, – I just a couple days ago, I think that the Bengals are not just the biggest threat to the Chiefs, but I think the Chiefs are kind of scared of Cincinnati. I would be, um, and I definitely think Cincinnati is going to end up in the Super Bowl. And my NFC title game is going to be the same one as yours, Detroit and Atlanta. I could see San Francisco making it there, and I could see Philadelphia doing it as well. But I think Detroit is just on a whole nother mission this year. They were a good play call away from being in the Super Bowl last year. Like, really, on that fourth down, if you kick the field goal there, you get the ball back, you tie it, you could possibly win that game, and we could be seeing the Lions-Chiefs. This year, I think the Lions are going to come out of the NFC, and we're going to get a Lions-Bengals Super Bowl, which, once again, I think – before Joe Burrow was drafted, if you said that sentence to anybody, they'd be like, what are you talking about? So definitely going to be interesting, and I think Cincinnati does it. I'm, I'm really high on Burrow. I think this is going to be the year he wins his ring. Um, and I can see him having a very Rodgers-like career where this might be the only one. But he's got an elite wide receiver one in Jamar Chase, and I think Jamar Chase is going to prove to the world that he is a top three receiver. Um, not better than Tyreek. Uh, maybe he's not, he's not better than Jefferson yet, but – no, those are going to be the top three uh, wide receivers. And, yeah, I, I think uh, Cincinnati is going to win the Super Bowl this year against the Detroit Lions. And the Lions, I want to count – that was kind of like a coin flip kind of Super Bowl because Detroit, they have so much grit. They have so much fight. And 
I think it's just all Jared Goff. It really comes down to that. If he plays on the level he did last year, if he plays just a little bit better than that, then, yeah, the Detroit Lions are winning the Super Bowl. I'm super high on Dan Campbell. That guy, like, yeah, big honestly, fan. that guy makes me want to play for the NFL. Like He does. That guy literally – so I'm, I'm honestly a lot of people do call him, call him what uh, Brandon Stanley if he succeeded. I do not agree with that statement. Mm-hmm. Listen, Dan, I know Dan Campbell's play calling can be very risky. Very. I know. I, I'll be honest. With you, I do not agree with him not go, n- going for it and not kicking the field goal. But listen, the Lions were literally probably one play away from the Super Bowl. They were. They and they. they I know you could say the defense's fault. They did kind of like fall apart but i believe it's the lions here please it's the lions year <laughs> i'm i feel so i felt bad for them so many times they've just been they've just been in just a hole their entire career they had a franchise quarterback for years years they couldn't bring stafford anywhere near a championship game they just couldn't they had megatron and stafford on the same team that team went oh and actually no no, no. no i was going to say that was the year they ended up getting stafford, uh, stafford. but but that 0 and 16, they had Megatron on an 0 and 16 team. Mm-hmm. I'm honestly, I feel bad for Megatron. He just had to wait a tad bit longer to see the see the light succeed. at the end of the title. Yeah. yeah, it's too bad. So we're almost wrapped up here. Uh, it's not, you know, on our prompter. It's not supposed to be one of our topics, but it was something. It might have been on there, and it just came to my mind. Which teams do you think are a most likely to go 0 and 17? And the teams that are most likely to go seventeen and zero. Okay, for the seventeen zero one is a bit hard, because no team is really s- too dominant right now. Honestly, the closest the closest I can see there's two teams. Closest I could see is the Ravens and the and the Niners. The Niners are just really stacked. Is just Brock Purdy is probably the weakest player on offense. He is by far the weakest player. I mean, that's saying a lot because Purdy is a very serviceable quarterback. I know there are a lot of teams that I think would much rather have Brock Purdy than the quarterback they have right now. Yeah, I just think Brock Purdy is the – I do like Brock Purdy, but he is definitely by far the reason why that team is being held back right now. Imagine – you can just imagine Mahomes on the Niners. Yeah, we'd be done in the league. Oh, yeah, we'd be (laughs) cooked. (laughs) Cooked. I and think for 0 and 17, I think it's going to be the team that finished really bad last year. There's two, I think. One is definitely going to be much worse than the other. Carolina Panthers, I think. I'm not going to say they have a legitimate shot because they did get a little bit better last year. And I think Bryce Young is going to play better, but they're going to be really bad for sure. And then the New York Giants is the other team that I kind of put right there. But I remember the last time I predicted the Giants to be really bad, they made the playoffs. <laughs> so, Giants fans, this might be your sign. But, no, I think those two are bottom of the barrel. My two bottom barrel teams, it's the Giants. Mm-hmm. But, man, this this really hurts to say. Oh, this I didn't really even think about you guys. Say. This really hurts to say. It's We really sacrificed 20 years, and now we're here. Man, it's, it's probably the Patriots. We... That is the offense. I'm. I know the offense. I'm really. I like our offense. It's just on paper, it no, looks it really bad. It's bad. It, Drake may. I'm sorry, Drake may. You're in the worst situation right now at quarterback than any other quarterback right now. Bo Nix has a better situation. Like yeah, it's it's bad. it's rough right now. It's really Drake. I don't. I don't want to see Drake. Honestly, I'm kind of. Uh, I'm on the fence of. I don't want to see Drake May until like week six. I, I know I'm gonna have to <laughs> suffer through Jacoby Brissett games. Goodness, where. Man, five years ago, I really do. I missed 2019, that Super Bowl season. Tom, please come back. Tom is not coming back. This is this is kind of a prediction I've been thinking about since draft night. I, I really do like Drake May as a player, but when you go to a bad situation right off the bat, that could be it for you. I think he's going to have a Sam Darnold-like career, which is really bad to say, and I know you don't want to hear that. It's just because of where the team's at, because he's definitely a really gifted quarterback. Last thing before we head out, any one coach specifically you think is on the hot seat? That is not going to come back next year. Robert Sala. There you go. That's what I was thinking, too. He, and I'm going to say it. He's amazing. He's, I think he's just a defense. He's just a really good defensive coordinator, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. I'm going to say this. He gets fired this year. You think so? I think the Jets are going to – I agree with you. The Jets are going to severely underperform. I mm-hmm. really do. I know they have a great roster on paper, but Rodgers is 40, and he's coming off an a injury that is kind of – an injury that really affects players' careers. I know yeah. Rodgers is not mobile, mobile, but honestly, 
I just Rodgers is like he did. And last time Rodgers played a full season, he played above average at best. Mm-hmm. To be honest with you, I think Rodgers is kind of he's definitely dipping in quality. I know Rodgers still he can sling it. It's just I don't. I just don't believe in the Jets. They have the pieces, but I think the most famous saying AFC East fans know is the Jets are going to jet. So I think an, even an eight-win season, nine-win season, Salah's out of there. It's disappointing. You have a team that should be a Super Bowl qualifier, but if you still resort to the Jet ways, and I like Robert Sala a lot, I think he could be the guy. He could be the guy to change Jet ways, but he hasn't. In his three years there now, nothing quality has been done with this team. Highest, so. The most amount of wins he has is eight wins right now. And I know people say he did that with Zach Wilson. Oh, I'm telling Let's you. Let's see it with Aaron Rodgers. Roger, no. their schedule for the Jets is brutal. It's really it's they, rough. They they, they, uh, they have the most primetime games right now. And which is so <laughs> stupid because you did that to them last year, and then when he ended up seeing the Jets on a Black Friday, <laughs> no one wants to watch that. No one wants to watch the Jets on a Monday night. Although that Sunday night that game that they had against Kansas City, it was entertaining. Yeah. Definitely entertaining. And they played the Raiders on Sunday night, which that game sucked. And I believe they gave up on Zach. I th- I'm going to say this. I know Jets don't like Zach Wills. Jets fans don't like Zach Wilson. I think they gave up on him way too fast. I don't know. I think he showed you all you're going to see with him. Um, Tyrod Taylor is a much more quality backup. I, I, I understand that. Ty- by the way, Tyrod Taylor is a cur- – he, that man is cursed. Every time he ends up go starting somewhere, they have a rookie quarterback behind him. He plays actually fairly well. And then and hurts then, himself. And then the the do- literally a team doctor punctured his lung. The Justin Herbert one. Yeah, that he was got his lung scary. punctured. And then he never. S- and then Justin Herbert played, and he never saw the field again. Poor dude. I think that guy had the. That guy's like a player that he's like an RG three, but like, if er- everything except the knee problem and like everything yeah. that could have gone bad went bad. He plays really well every time he touches the field. Tyrod plays super well. I agree. And now. He's kind of just stuck in this like journey. He's a journeyman, but like he could be a starter somewhere. He could. He could start over Daniel Jones. I said what I said. I, he definitely could. He could start there. And honestly, get weird with me all you want. He could start over Derek Carr. <laughs> I think he wouldn't start right away, but I think he'd earn it. Which brings me to Dennis Allen being the coach on the hot seat. I could definitely see. Um, I can't remember his name. I know it's something weird over in uh, Chicago. Is like flabbergast something something along those lines um head coach over in chicago i think both of those guys i think chicago's gonna play well enough to where he'll be able to keep his job but when it comes down to new orleans it's this is just such a weird spot that they're in i think they're where the dolphins were maybe three or four years ago where like before they had Tua, so they didn't know what was going on you have like these six and six seasons coming to week 14 then you just go on this like little disaster at the end of the year and I think that's where the Saints are at right now. Um, I know they start off week one against Carolina, so they're going to start off with a win, a bunch of high hopes, and I think they're only going to win like three or four more games that year. Speaking of that game, I actually have Carolina upsetting them. No, you don't. I don't tell me Car- that. I'm, I actually, I'm one of those guys that actually kind of believes in Bryce Young. I think the I think they did enough to get like a 7-6 win, six win team. I, I don't think know. they did enough. Maybe a five win team. Which maybe is maybe five be better wins, than two. But the New Orleans Saints are my prediction to get the number one overall pick. I think really? they I don't know if you all know this. The Saints have been in cap. They've been deep in cap for a while now. I don't know where they get the money. And they're the they are the oldest team age player age wise. Mm. Their average age right now is thirty one. That's a really, really yeah. old age. They, and none of them are like premier playmakers. I mean you have Kamara, but I don't think he's I mean, he might be just Cameron 30. Jordan, Cam he's, Jordan, he's, he's like older. End, end of his career. Demiro Davis is still good, but it's just that's just not. They have, I forgot they have a. I forgot Tyron, Tyron Matthew is still on that team. I for, kind of forgot about that. Guy. He is, yeah. They have a. They just added Chase Young, which that could be something. He, that, that's he, you I can count him as a boomer bust, but he's kind of already. Fun fact: been Chase that Young bust. is top five in youngest players on that team. I'm not kidding. And that's he got drafted the same year Burrow <laughs> did. So that's and everyone else from that draft is getting extensions. And then here's Chase Young on his third team in the NFL. I do. I hope he find. I hope he finds his groove. He was actually not bad on the Niners, by the way. It wasn't terrible. That was, was the thing. I saw a lot of uh, Niners player or Niners fans talk about his lack of effort, which is kind of why they gave up on him. Washington. He was gifted in Washington. Washington right off the way. Didn't he win a Rookie of the Year? He did. He was. He was 2020 Rookie of the Year. Crazy how the league like changes like that. And then. Uh, that team, w- by the way, I just want to let you know that, that that was a fever dream. That that Commanders team, they the were called Washington the football team at the time. Team. Alex Smith led them to a, a seven and nine division title. The, oh, the I NFC 
that was the year I think Dak was hurt. So we had like Cooper Rush starting for the Dallas Cowboys. It, that was like Ben DiNucci, didn't he play a couple <laughs> games that DiNucci. year? Ben DiNucci. Where was what was wrong? That with was Carson Wentz's last year as a starter as well. Yeah. Actually, no, no, it wasn't. He went to the Colts. Was that the year he was? So then, what? Who was he starting w- in Philly around that time? Who was starting in Philly? Well, no, because uh, Hertz and um, Wentz were on the team at the same time. Yeah. But I didn't. I remember Hertz made the playoffs. I think as a rookie, or was it his second no, year? No, it was. His, I believe it was his second year. And uh, another fun fact. Um, remember when the Colts were on that era where, like, they r- it's called the, I call it the rent a QB era. They just picked up some <laughs> old guy, yeah. hoped for the best. Matt Ryan, Phil Rivers, um, who yeah, was before Carson Wentz. Wentz, yeah, that was the only one that worked was Philip Rivers. And yeah, by they the took way, him to the playoffs, right? he took he did he played a very good game against the Bills in that playoff game. I Phil, man, they Phillip beat Rivers. Baltimore in those playoffs too. Yeah, Philip Rivers is um. A, n- a guy, Philip Rivers, like that is like a likable guy, but man, that's one of the one. That's the guy that you'll have on the list that like best quarterbacks not to win a Super Bowl. He was just on the Chargers, you know. Yeah. Chargers gonna charge her. So. I don't. Uh, I have mixed opinions about Philip Rivers. I think he was. He could could be all time. I don't think he's all time. We might see him in a few years. We might see another Philip Rivers soon. Yeah, Mm. one of his kids is probably gonna mess around and get to the league sometime soon. Oh, one of eleven. Jeez, eleven. He has a whole offense (laughs) as children. That's crazy. (laughs) Whole offense. That's so. That's insane. (laughs) But thirty-two man. The thirty. Philip Rivers. Make a fifty-three. Get fifty-three children. Make a fifty-three man team. Call it the. The Rivers. Yeah, <laughs> just the, the – where he's from somewhere in the south. I know he coaches the high school there. Yeah. But, honestly, congratulations. I like Philip Rivers. I don't know why I'm over here digging on the guy. But uh, so I think that's going to be all we have today. Next week we're going to review week one, predict week two. Chance is hopefully going to be back. Maybe um, if the Bills sign him, then, you know, he'll be up in Buffalo for the rest of the year. But I want to thank you guys so much for joining us, our little yap session today. Um, next week's definitely going to be a good one. Be sure to catch the game tonight between the Chiefs Ravens. Tomorrow night we have a game in Brazil between the Packers and the Eagles and then the Sunday slate. If you want some more information about those games, check out our episode last week. We went over all of them, predicted all of them, and or almost all of them. And that's going to be all for us. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We'll see you soon. <laughs>